Good day, Grade 12s. Welcome to this first lesson in Week 8. We are continuing this week to learn about organic molecules. In this lesson, we're going to be learning about the students' favorite section of organic chemistry, alcohols. But please understand, when we're talking about alcohols in this section, we're talking about everything that has a functional group of an OH, an hydroxyl. <laughs> Welcome grade 12s to this session on organic molecules. In this lesson, we now turn to other organic compounds that are not hydrocarbons. There are five main homologous series which contain oxygen. These are their alcohols, carboxylic acids, esters, aldehydes, and ketones. In this lesson, we will focus on the alcohols, acids, and esters. Alcohols have the hydroxyl or OH functional group. The general formula is CnH2n plus 1 OH. Let's hear more from Amira. In this lesson, you will probably hear about a lot of organic chemicals that are new to you. But there is one which is well known, alcohol. Drinking alcohol irresponsibly or excessively is not good for anyone. It impairs judgment and often leads to fatal car crashes. Alcohol is a toxin to the system and can have a negative effect on the way our brains function. Most people don't know that the molecule that is in wine, beer and spirits is actually only one out of a big family of molecules, all called alcohols. Molecules from the alcohol group are also used to make some dental products cosmetics, antiperspirants, perfumes, antiseptic and cleansing liquids, medication, and some foodstuffs. Of course, alcohols are also used in many types of laboratory work. Alcohols are also specific homologous series. And like homologous molecules, they all share the same functional group the hydroxyl or OH group. They also share a common way of naming. Let's name a few now and see if you can spot the pattern. Both of these molecules are alcohols, propanol and pentanol. Notice the OH functional group on each one. Can you spot the pattern in the naming? If you noticed that they all end with the letters O-L, you'd be correct. Alcohols are named by changing the end of the backbone molecule from the letter E to the letters O-L. In this case, the backbone molecule is propane. Propane consists of only carbon and hydrogen. But when one hydrogen atom changes to hydroxyl, like this, we have an alcohol. So the name changes from propane to propanol. Remember the rules for naming alkenes and alkynes? The same rules apply for alcohols to show where the OH group is. In the case of propanol, the OH group is on the first carbon, so we don't need to add a number to the name. Let's see that again paying attention to the naming steps. This molecule is the alcohol in wine and beer. Naming becomes easy if we count the carbon atoms first. The backbone of this molecule is called ethane because it consists of two carbon atoms. I'm sure you can work out how the name changes to indicate that it is now an alcohol. Quite simply, the name of this alcohol is ethanol. Notice how the E at the end of the original name is swapped for the letters O-L. There is no need to place a number in the name because the hydroxyl group is on the first carbon. Now, try to draw the molecule in this motor car antifreeze. The main ingredient is called ethylene glycol, but it's IU pack name is Ethan 1-2-Diol. 
Remember that Dai means two of the same thing. The numbers indicates their position. If this is the structure you got, you are correct. Well done. Notice that the backbone molecule is ethane and two hydroxyl groups occur on carbons number one and two. The ethan one two diol is very useful as an antifreeze. When mixed with water, it protects the engine of a car in cold weather by keeping the water inside the engine in liquid form. It does this by lowering the freezing point of the water inside. So when it's below freezing point in winter, the water in the engine can still flow. Alcohols are also useful as disinfectants because they kill germs very effectively. They are used to sterilize wounds, cuts, and even surgical instruments. We are starting to use alcohols in another interesting way. There is a lot of uncertainty about where our fuels will come from in the future. So alcohols are being investigated and used as fuels for motor vehicles. Some fuels in South Africa already contain ethanol. And in case you'd like a good career in the sciences, there is much work being done on producing ethanol from maize, waste fruit, and other plant matter. Think about it. Thanks, Amira. We have seen that the OH group can be joined to the carbon chain in many ways. Let's look at this in more detail. Three different types of alcohols can be identified depending on how the carbon attached to the hydroxyl groups bonds to other carbon atoms. In some alcohols, the carbon attached to the OH or hydroxyl group is attached only to one other carbon atom. These are called primary alcohols. Examples are methanol, ethanol found in alcoholic beverages, and propane one oil. Remember that ethanol does not need to be called 1-ethanol or ethan-1-ol because the structure remains the same whichever carbon we place the hydroxyl group on. In the second type of alcohols, the carbon attached to the OH or hydroxyl group is also attached to two other carbon atoms. Examples are butan-2-ol and propane-2-ol. These are called secondary alcohols. A third type of alcohol is when the carbon attached to the OH or hydroxyl group is also attached to three other carbon atoms. These are tertiary alcohols. Let's see if you understand the pattern. What type of alcohol is this? Well done if you say that this is a secondary alcohol. The carbon attached to the OH is also attached to two other carbons. We have seen that there are many different alcohols and they have a wide variety of purposes, not limited to the alcoholic beverages. But don't forget that alcoholic beverages are hazardous to your health. We hope you now have a better understanding of the homologous series we call alcohols. 